Today, my husband and I are going to rate the different eateries on board the Scarlet Lady. We've cruised with Virgin Voyages five times together, and one of the reasons we keep returning is the quality of the food. So if you'd like to hear our thoughts, please keep watching. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a splendid day and if you're new here, welcome. I got such great feedback on the video that Tom and I did together recently, so I thought we'd do another one. That video was on our top 10 favorite foods on board the Scarlet Lady. We start at number 10 and go all the way up to our top pick. If you didn't see that video, I will link it at the end in case you want to check it out. But for today's video, we are going to dish on the restaurants and different eateries. We're going to rate the ambiance, the variety of menu items at each location, and also the overall quality of food. We're going to use a rating of 1 to 5, with 5 being the best. Couple quick disclaimers, this video is just our opinions obviously and it's just for fun. Everyone has different tastes and if you have a different opinion, please leave me a comment in the comment section because I would love to hear it. Oh, and I'm not going to include food footage in this video. We just did a video where we talked all about the food. So if you wanna see the food on the Scarlet Lady, check that one out or check out one of my other videos. I have Tasty Secrets of the Scarlet Lady, and I also have a close-up look at the food on the Scarlet Lady. So if you want food footage, that's where to go. With that out of the way, let's dive in. Guess who's back? Back again, it's Tom. Hi, Tom. Hello. Thanks for coming back on my channel. How do you feel, your second video with me? I don't know. Okay, good, <laughs> he's excited. He loves talking about cruising, so don't let him fool you. So before we get started, I thought I would just give you a little bit of background on the type of foods that Tom and I like. We do tend to like more simple, fresh foods. We're not super fancy, adventurous eaters. And also, Tom is a big carnivore. He loves meat. And I don't eat a lot of meat, and I don't eat any red meat. So keep that in mind when we talk about our ratings. So let's start with the main restaurants, the ones that require a reservation. And since we're talking about meat, why don't we start with the Wake Steakhouse? Okay. How would you rate their overall ambiance? I, I like it. It's, I mean, it's, it's a big restaurant. There's lots of people there. So, you know, it's not, you're not sitting quietly by yourself in a, in a, in a, in a fancy place. So um, I give it a four. It is very, very pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it's very pretty, but again, it's, it, you've, it's a full room, so. That is true. You sometimes do end up sitting very, very close together. I was going to give it a five because I think it's so pretty, but I'm going to go with you, and I think I'm also going to give it a four. Yeah, you can be sitting at a table and be, you know, that far from the couple sitting at the table next to you. Yeah, I agree. The Wake is such a pretty restaurant, and you can't beat the view at brunch. Of course, you can't get that view when it's dark, so I would definitely recommend anyone selling on the Scarlet Lady to either make a brunch reservation or an early dinner reservation. Okay, so we've covered ambiance. Let's go ahead and do brunch and then dinner because they do have two different menus. So how would you rate the brunch menu in terms of their options? I'd be generous to give them a three. It's not very breakfasty, and it seems to be a bit on the fancy. Lunch side. The options are fancier lunch and not really my favorite, but not not due to quality of food, just options. Right. Yeah. And I definitely agree. And because I really do like more traditional breakfast favorites for brunch, I'm going to give it a two for the menu options because I just wish they had more traditional breakfast items. It'd be real easy for bed breakfast. Right. Yeah, like two or three dishes would make, you know, an omelet. I mean, we'd fix that. Right, exactly. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about the dinner options. Now, you love steak, so they've got lots of steak. So what would you give for the variety of menu options for that? I mean, I'd give it a five. I mean, it's there, there's lots of options. There's, there's several different kinds of steaks. There's a good amount of side dish options. You know, you can order potatoes or fries or mushrooms or, you know, vegetables. Yeah. Right, exactly. And I think I would rate it only because I don't eat a lot of meat and it is a steakhouse, but I'm sorry, you know, I wish they did have a few more options that weren't meat related. So I'm going to give it a three, but that's just for me. But isn't it nice though, um, one of the things that's so great about selling on the Scarlet Lady is that all the restaurants are included and they mm -hmm. don't like, like, I don't know, what is 
Chops Grill on Royal Caribbean now, I think they're charging $55 a person to eat at the steakhouse. That's right. a lot of money. That can really add up. Yeah, it's not worth it. Okay, so we've covered that. So now in the wake, what would you say the overall quality of food? How would you rate the overall quality of food? I'd give their overall quality of food a four. Um, you know, it's not the highest quality cuts of meat. You know, and the, the same thing with the shrimp. You know, I mean, I've had better shrimp. But, right. you know, it's it's considering that I'm not paying $55 to go in there, right. I'm, I'm quite okay with the quality. Yeah, I think the quality of the food at the wake is very, very good, and I would also give it a four. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go to Razzle Dazzle. Now, this will be interesting. What do you think of the ambiance? Because it does have kind of a wild and crazy decor. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I, I give it a four. Mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's, it's a fun diner-ish type feel and that's I don't think they're trying to be anything else so. right I was not crazy about the decor in Razzle Dazzle the first time I saw it but it really has grown on me and I actually really really enjoy it now so I'm going to give it a four as well it's a fun place and the servers there are definitely the most fun of all the restaurants at least in my experience okay so what do you think about the menu options let's start with brunch first um I, I'd give it a four I mean there's mm -hmm. there's variety you can order a number of different things. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to give it a four. I think it does have good variety. I like more breakfast items at brunch. They have more breakfast items, so I'm going to give it a four also. Now, what about the menu options for dinner? How do you feel about that? Because they do have mostly vegan and vegetarian options, but they do have some meat dishes, and they've got the New York strip that you like on the secret menu. So do you think they have enough options, or what's your take? I think there's enough options, but I'm going to give it a three. It's I mean, I can always find something to eat, but now that I've eaten there a number of times, I'm, there's nothing that excites me about their dinner menu. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a four just because there are more things on the menu that I do like there because they do have some vegetarian options that I like. Okay. So now let's talk about overall quality of food. And what do you think about that brunch and dinner? Um, I mean, I, I'll give the food quality a four. I think that's pretty standard across the ship. So. Yeah, I think so, too. I think the quality is a four across the ship, so maybe we shouldn't have included that. But we're going to anyway, because I've already done the intro. Okay, so let's talk about extra virgin. And what do you think of the ambiance? I'll give it a four. I, I like... I give it a one. You don't like it? Do you think it's a pretty restaurant? Yeah, I mean, we, we've tend to be in there earlier. It, it, they're still, you can still kind of see outside for a little bit. It's so bland. The decor is so bland. Yeah. 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 But you're going to stick with four? Yeah, three or four. I don't think I'd give it a one, but. All right. I'm going to go with a one or a two. I was invited to tour the Scarlet Lady before it sailed out of Miami. And I remember walking into Extra Virgin and just being completely underwhelmed. Um, they do have some very sexy restaurants like Pink Agave and the wake is super pretty with the with with the grand piano and everything. And I was just underwhelmed by extra virgin. So I'm going to give it a two and you're going to give it a four. Yeah. OK, so we average out at three. Now, what do you think about the menu items at extra virgin? What would you give those? Um, I'd give it a four. I mean, there's there's options. There's plenty of options. And it is your favorite restaurant on the ship. You do like it a lot. I, I do. I'm going to go ahead and give it a three because they do have tons of meat dishes on the menu and the pasta dishes aren't traditional. They tend to be more fancy gourmet. I think the food is very good, but I do wish they had more traditional Italian options. And then for overall quality food, are we going with four? Sure. Four it is. All right. Okay, Pink Agave. So Pink Agave is my favorite restaurant on board the Scarlet Lady. I love it. I wish I could eat there every night, but I can't. And I love the ambiance. It is just a very cool restaurant. I love the decor. And I'm going to give it a five. What do you think? Okay, well, I'll go with... Uh, you don't have to agree with me. No, no it... Um, hmm. I'll give it a five just because it seems that they've got more, I don't know, there's nooks and crannies and, and different types of seating. It's right. not one big bland. Everything's the same, which some of the other restaurants have. So it's a little more interesting that way. Yeah. And then also for the menu variety, I'm also going to give it a five. I think they have lots of different dishes and just lots of different dishes that I particularly like. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to give them a three on that. 
Um, all the food's very good. Everything I've had there is very good. There's just a very limited number of dishes. They've kind of broken it up into small plates, mm -hmm. which, you know, they tend to bring your table all of the small plates to, to get started. And then, you know, as far as the, the large plates, there's two or three options. Right. Yeah, I totally understand that from you, but um, I love Mexican food, so I pretty much love everything on the menu that I will eat except for the red meat, so that's why I'm going to give it a five. Okay, and then overall quality of food, I'm going to give it a five because I just think it tastes so good. I love it. You know, the enchiladas are my favorite, and the guacamole with the pomegranate. Um, I think the quality there is actually a step above the other restaurants. I can I can agree with that. I think the it's, it's very different. Mm -hmm. The food is very different there than in the other restaurants. So like pork is, you know, very good, well mm -hmm. cooked. It's, you're not noticing a difference in a quality like a steak. You, you right. know, so. Okay. All right. So we're at five then. Yeah. Okay, good. Now we're going to come to the controversial part of our video, and that is Gung Bay. We have very, very, very mixed feelings about this, and we'll tell you a little bit about that. But let's start with the, with the ratings. So overall um, atmosphere or decor or ambiance, what would you give it? That's hard. I, I want to like it. Mm -hmm. It does get a little loud. You're seated with a group. In our case, it'd be two of us, or if we're sailing with some another, another group, it'd be four of us, and you're sitting at a table with six or eight. Yeah. So um, it, it can get loud. It can, it can get a little crowded in there. So I'm going to give it a three just because of that. Yeah, it is supposed to be a rowdy experience. That's one of the things that Virgin says, you're supposed to be rowdy. So it is loud. It's not a place for a quiet dinner. I think we probably would have had more fun with being seated with other people if they were as fun as we are. Right. Yeah, we, we've had some dads sit with us, so it hasn't been the best experience. But that is a good thing for you to point out. You do sit with other people at Gung Bay. Overall ambiance, I'm going to give it a three. I think it's fine. I like the windows, but of course, you don't get a view at night. Um, but it is a nice space. It is definitely a nice space. You're, you're kind of rolling the dice when you go in here as far as who you're, who you're going to get seated with. And my preference would be to do that earlier in the cruise, in, in a cruise mm -hmm. particularly if you're sailing just just alone or with or just a couple and you want to meet other people because you are sitting with other people and you will meet other people that might be good that might be bad right so now let's talk about menu options and i don't know they do have a menu but but every time we've gone in there we've just done the dinner that they prepare for you but i have seen other things on the menu there is a menu i've seen people order drinks we've ordered drinks off the drink menu yeah. which is different um i've seen people order salads and other right. things but when it comes to the the dinner itself they pretty much just serve you everything right um so i would just say that's a one or a two it's there's, there's really not a lot of choice there yeah, I agree. I'm going to also give it a two. And um, what about quality of food? I've always thought the quality of food was pretty good there, but I think I'm going to give it a three. I actually don't think it's as good as The Wake. I don't think it's as good as Pink Agave. Um, I think it's good for a cruise ship. It's totally good food, but I don't find the quality to be up to that level. I'll give it a two. Oh. It's, it's not, I don't know that it's necessarily the quality of the food. It's just the food. The meat is pretty bland. They could do with some sauce. That's um, a good point. Um, you know, the, the seafood is the seafood. Um, you know, and they cook it, they pretty much cook it for you mm -hmm. in, 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 in front of you. Uh, I don't know that that was originally their plan, but that's kind of how it has to be. That has in the past caused us some delay because the person who was supposed to be cooking our table's food was still cooking another table's food. And we sat there for a better part of an hour waiting for him to come serve or, you know, cook our food. And Tom is right. When the Scarlet Lady came to Miami, they did say that you could cook your food at Gun Bay or someone could cook it for you, a staff member. Um, since then, I don't think anybody cooks their food. I haven't seen anybody cook their food. And the other thing that Tom touched on is that the past two times we have dined at Gun Bay, um, we have had really negative experiences and it is because the servers are overwhelmed. We've waited an hour for them to start cooking. We haven't gotten drink refills twice. They haven't even done the game. They, that, they have a drinking game that you're supposed to do when, when you sit down. And the past two times, we've just been sitting there, sitting there, and then it gets so late, they just start cooking. 
So my best tip for Gun Bay is if you do want to dine there, I would make a reservation for as soon as it opens because I think people go there, they start sitting and sitting and then they kind of get behind and that sort of thing. It just seems to kind of been a mess the past couple yeah. of times. Okay, we were pretty late, so go early. Our reservation was late. We were not late. Right. Yeah. I would say go as soon as it opens through the first table in there. Okay, I did want to point out that we have never dined at the test kitchen, so we can't really rate that. We have wanted to a couple different times, but we were sailing with my parents and they had absolutely no interest in it. So although Tom and I are not the most adventurous eaters, we certainly would be happy to try it. So I'm hoping on our next Scarlet Lady sailing we get to. You can always have pizza afterwards. You can always have pizza afterwards. And we have had people tell us that they went to the test kitchen and then they went right to the galley to get a burger. Speaking of galley, let's go ahead and talk about the galley. Um, now for ambiance, I mean, it is a food court. So I think for what it is, I think it's a very attractive space. I'm going to give it a four. Four is fine. Yeah. All right, good. I'm glad you're agreeable this evening. Okay, so now what about options there? And I have some thoughts. There are options. Yes. Um, so I would I would give their options a four. Problem with the options, if you start ordering from the different areas of the galley, your food all comes out in a very different time frame. Right, exactly. And I'm going to give it a three only because, you know, Tom and I have cruised a lot. And they do have different stations, but I do miss all the options that a traditional cruise line has at a buffet. I really do. You know, they have tacos, but it's three types of tacos. They have ramen. It's two types of ramen. It's just, it, I find it to be a very limited menu as compared to other cruise lines. Yeah. So, and quality of food, what would you say? Three or four. Um, yeah, it's fine. Right. I mean, you know, the burgers are what I would expect. They're overcooked. Right. You know, the, the omelets that they make are good. I like the, you know, I like the omelets in the morning. The fries are fine. Mm -hmm. The the paninis are good. Yeah, the paninis are good. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the, the, the quality of the food is, is fine. I, I do agree, though. I would probably prefer a regular buffet. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's just faster. Right. I mean, anyway, you go in to the alley, you sit, you place an order, and you wait for it, and they bring it to you, which is all nice. But right. it's not that nice. I'd rather just go get my food and sit down, eat it, and leave. Yeah, I agree. I would say quality for a cruise line buffet or food court, I I would give it a four. I would give it a four. The, the omelets are made to order well as they are on most cruise ships, but I think the food is is pretty good. So I would give it a four. Okay, so now let's move on to the last few eateries and let's talk about the dock. And I know you and I both love the dock. It's one of our happy places when we're on the Scarlet Lady. And I'm sorry, I don't know, with ambiance, I think it has to be a five. It is a fantastic space. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. It can get a little crowded, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's all right. It's so pretty to look at the wake and have a cocktail and listen to some live music. Now, what about variety of menu options? They only have five or six. Yeah, so it's we're pretty gonna, limited. Yeah, it's pretty limited. So, uh, you know, what can you rate that? It's it's just a few small plates, so we don't even need to rate that, really. Yeah, I mean, it's not really designed to be a, an eatery. It's it's a it's a it's a snack, right? You know, with your drink. Right. So the fact that they have snacks and they're free and they're pretty good is there. I would consider them to be very, very good, very high end small plates. And so I think we're both going to give it a five for quality of food yeah. because the food is spectacular. The grilled shrimp is great. The hanger steak on a pita, the chicken on a pita, the goat cheese polenta. I've just found everything there to be really, really tasty. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the pizza place? Let's talk about some pizza. What do you think of the ambiance in there or the environment? Um, it can get a little crowded. It can get a little loud. It depends. I mean, it, it's um, outdoors can be a little bit in the... You don't have a lot of tables. Yeah, I don't have a ton of seating. And, yeah. and I think it's really, when we eat in there, it's usually like late or like the first day. For, for lunch, lunch, yeah. Um, and it's, it can get a little warm outside mm -hmm. on the deck there. Uh, it's not, it's kind of half covered so if there's any rain it wipes that area out yeah, so it's like three. yeah so yeah i mean i don't know that it's really designed for yeah it really isn't but um it is funny because on 
um, on embarkation day when you go in there, sometimes it is really hard to find a table, but you can always get your pizza to go. And, yeah. and that's what we did last time. We just got our pizzas to go. We we went out and we found a table somewhere else and just ate yeah. it there. Now, what about the menu options? They have like six different kinds of pizza maybe, and they have uh, salads in there and yeah. that's about it. But I think it's sufficient. It's sufficient. They could, I mean, since they're making them, they could expand it. And I don't know what we haven't attempted to try to ask them for anything special. They might do it for you. I, I did. But. Yeah. We just always just order off the menu, but I did hear somebody say that they always get a pepperoni with pesto. Okay. Um, so that is a custom pie. Okay. So I guess you can get, get a custom one there. So in that case, I'm going to give it a, a, a three or right. four. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. And then quality of food. I think the pizza is so is great. Good. I'm going to give it a five yeah, for, for, good. for cruise ship pizza. It is spectacular made to order. And you get the whole pie versus, you know, sometimes where you go in and you get a slice or two. Right. So the only other eatery on board that I can think of is the Social Club Diner. We've never eaten there. We've just stopped there and gotten some movie candy once. It, it's not always been open on some of the cruises that we've been on. The Social Club is where they offer what they call carnival eats. So you can get hot dogs or a pretzel or chicken wings. And we have thought about going there, but we haven't yet. But definitely next time I would like to try the pretzel. Like I said, it's we've seen it open. I've seen it closed more than open. So I don't know what the schedule is there. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Welcome. How does it feel being a YouTube phenomenon? Right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, hun. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. I would love it if you would join my traveling party. If you'd like to talk Virgin Cruising with me just a little bit longer, I will link to videos at the end that I think you might like. The video on the left is the one where Tom and I rate our top 10 food items on the Scarlet Lady. And the video on the right is Tasty Secrets of the Scarlet Lady, where I tell you about some lesser known dining and meal options. Until next time, I hope you have happy and safe travels. I appreciate you and thank you so much for watching. Bye.